bless the great state of South Carolina. South Carolina and our incredible volunteers all over the country continue to defy the pundits and to produce extraordinary results. Let me say a word about Governor Jeb Bush, a man who had a terrific record of, as governor of the state of Florida who brought job creation and education innovation to the people of Florida. A man who ran a campaign based on ideas, based on policy, based on substance. A man who didn't go to the gutter and engage in insults and attacks. Governor Bush brought honor and dignity to this race. Tonight he has suspended his campaign, but Heidi and I give our very best to Jeb and Columba and their entire extraordinary family. We wish them the best and we thank them for their remarkable campaign. I want to thank Congressman Mark Sanford, and former Attorney General Charlie Condon. Senator Lee Bright, and Representatives Bill Chumley and Wendy Nanny and Gary Smith and Mike Burns and Jay Jordan. and Pastor Mike Gonzalez. And heroic volunteers like David Helmer and David Aguilar and Sean and Kay Meyer and all seven of their terrific kids. And the nearly 500 South Carolina pastors that endorsed and joined this campaign. First Iowa, then New Hampshire, now South Carolina. We, we don't know the exact results right now. Right now, we are effectively tied for second place. But each time, defying expectations and causing the pundits you hear now from across the Potomac is the Washington cartel in full terror that the conservative grassroots are rising up. But before we reflect on what we have together accomplished, I'd like to pause for a moment of silence in honor of a great man. American hero, Justice Anthony Scalia. Today, I attended Justice Scalia's funeral. I had the honor of knowing him for 20 years. He was brilliant, principled, faithful and ferocious defender of the Constitution and the Bill of Rights. Yeah. 
as Ronald Reagan was to the presidency, so too was Justice Scalia to the U.S. Supreme Court. His passing, one week ago today, underscores the enormous stakes of this election. It is not just one, but two branches of government that are at stake. And Justice Scalia's replacement will not be decided by the Washington Power Brokers. It will be decided by we, the people. This election will be a referendum on the Supreme Court. And I'll tell you this, I cannot wait to stand on that debate stage with Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders or whatever other socialist they nominate. and make the case against their radical vision of the Constitution that would strip away life and marriage and religious liberty and the Second Amendment and the basic rights of every American citizen. In Iowa, they said it couldn't be done. And we won. In New Hampshire, they said a conservative, a Bible-believing Christian could not compete. And we defied expectations. And tonight, despite millions and millions of dollars of false and nasty attacks, despite the entirety of the political establishment coming together against us. South Carolina has given us another remarkable resource. Together, Iowa, New Hampshire, and South Carolina tell us three things. First, that conservatives continue to unite behind our campaign. If you are a conservative, this is where you belong because only one strong conservative is in a position to win this race. Second, second, we are the only campaign that has beaten and can beat Donald Trump. That's why Donald relentlessly attacks us and ignores all the other candidates. Now, I congratulate Donald on his victory tonight. But I will say this to the people of America. If you don't believe that Donald Trump is the best candidate to run against Hillary Clinton in November, if you believe we need a strong contrast with the Democrats, then we welcome you aboard our team. We welcome you to be part of the over 200,000 volunteers and the over 980,000 volunteers' contributions at tedcruz.org. Join us at tedcruz.org.
And the third lesson of Iowa, New Hampshire, and South Carolina is that only one candidate remaining has a consistent conservative Other candidates engage in nonstop personal attacks. We have not and we will not respond in kind. There is a reason other candidates resort to insults, and it is that they cannot defend the substance of their record. There is only one candidate who has led the fight against amnesty. Who has led the fight against Obamacare. Who has led the fight to defend life and marriage and religious liberty. Who has led the fight to protect our right to keep and bear arms under the Second Amendment. Who will fight to pass a simple flat tax and abolish the IRS. Only one candidate has stood up to the corrupt deal-making in Washington, said no to the corporate welfare, and indeed only one candidate took on the ethanol mandate in Iowa and won. As president, I will rebuild our military. Stand unequivocally with the nation of Israel. And utterly destroy ISIS. Together, we will secure the borders and keep America safe. And I give you my solemn word that every justice I appoint to the U.S. Supreme Court will be a principled constitutionalist who will be faithful and will vigorously protect the fundamental rights of our children. fundamental liberties that all of us have been blessed to inherit. It's why I fight. It's why everyone here fights, because we love our children, and we will not go quietly into the night and give up on a brighter America. Now the race turns to Nevada and to Super Tuesday in the so-called SEC primary. And Iowa, New Hampshire, and South Carolina have given the voters a clear, defined choice. You can go with Washington deal makers, or we can stand together with a proven, consistent constitutional conservative and bring back mourning in America.
Each of you is amazing, and together we will win the Republican nomination. We will beat the Democrats in November. And we will restore this last best hope of mankind that is the United States of America. Thank you.